welcome back in today's lecture i am going to talk about again the energy based modeling okay so one way to create energy based modeling that we have calculated the kinetic energy potential energy dissipation energy and after that we have identify the configuration variables or or some kind of generalized coordinate we have select and based on that generalized coordinate what we have done we have solve the euler lagrange equation to get some kind of differential equation okay so so if you see if you uh, means uh, remember the previous class at that time what basically we have do uh, we have done we have defined some kind of lagrangian like function so and lagrangian like function l l is nothing but kinetic energy minus potential energy we have defined okay so kinetic energy either you can write some book uh, writing kinetic energy like uh, like v some some are like uh, uh, writing u okay so if you see physics book then most of time they are using this kind of notion okay and after that what we have to do we have to minimize this t0 to extremize this obviously extremum is minimum only in case of the the dynamical system so we have to to minimize this particular functional phi t okay and after minimizing this particular functional we will get the euler lagrange equation and in the previous class what we have seen that euler lagrange equation can be given like this so suppose generalized coordinate is q so i can write like this and after that do l by do q and and if i have some kind of dissipation kind of term so we have to incorporate that dis dissipation kind of term also here and after that generalized force acting on that particular particular generalized coordinate that is f so fq we have to substitute okay if there is no external force then this is zero if there is no dissipation then this is zero okay in this way we have performed the modeling or energy based model modeling okay and this term t minus u we are telling that difference of kinetic energy minus potential energy that is called as a action, action function okay so using minimizing this x or extremizing this action function we are getting the mathematical model directly okay and here you can select any coordinate coordinate frame okay either polar coordinate frame or either cartesian coordinate frame and whatever way okay so i i have already told you that even if you will go to quantum quantum mechanics also you are able to utilize this kind of law okay so this is more general than the newton's law okay now what what we found here that after solving this equation i will get some kind of equation that is second order differential equation so i i i can find second order non linear sometime this is non autonomous also non autonomous equation okay so in order to get the state space representation again i have to change it into first order differential equation okay so now one question is arises that is it possible to to find some kind of way such that i can directly get system or mathematical model in state space representation or using the first order means whatever model i will get that is from first order non linear differential equation or linear differential equation okay and answer of this question is yes we have to do some kind of transformation to this lagrangian lagrangian uh, means formulation only okay so and that particular modeling is called hamiltonian based modeling okay so in today's lecture i am going to discuss that how to perform some kind of transformation such that here action energy is converted into some kind of total energy total energy means kinetic energy plus potential energy and after that by solving some other set of differential equation we will get some kind of direct state space representation okay and this is called hamiltonian based modeling okay so first we have to understand the transformation okay 
one more important thing i am going to highlight here that if you see the energy okay suppose that something is moving so at that time we are writing half m v square okay v square or we are same kind of things we are writing x dot square okay if you plot this particular function okay it is possible to show that this particular function is convex in nature okay even if you can subtract the kinetic energy to them again it is possible to show that convexity is maintained okay and how basically we are checking some function is convex so you have to do that uh, do like that y equal to fx some function in xy plane what you can do you can take the second derivative and if second derivative is greater than 0 then i can tell that this function y equal to fx is convex function okay and what is meaning of legendre transformation so legendre transformation is is uh, what uh, this uh, transformation is doing they are converting this y equal to fx in some other coordinate or some other function and independent variable also going to change okay so now after doing this kind of transformation i will get some kind of benefit and due to that reason we are going to do perform this transformation we will see that what kind of benefit we will get in the subsequent slide okay so here you can see that how to construct this transformation so uh, so uh, by the name of scientist legendre this uh, uh, the name of this transformation is called legendre transformation okay so try to understand for a scalar case and after that in the same way we are going to generalize it for the vector case also okay so first what we have to do we have to draw the graph in xy plane okay and after that drawing the graph what you can do you can select any number and and corresponding to that number what you can do that number give you slope and you can draw the straight line okay so i have selected number p arbitrarily and after that i have drawn one line from the origin okay so this line is nothing but i can tell that this is some kind of line called px okay now what we have to do we have to see the distance of this curve and and this is original curve y equal to fx so i have to select the, the distance between this curve and this curve farthest distance okay and it is possible to show that whenever we are talking about farthest distance then slope at the farthest distance so so farthest distance means from here to here and if you draw the tangent here then then slope of this and slope of original line that is parallel okay so since i want to find the largest largest uh, means distance from here or maximum distance from here so so what we have to do first we have to construct the function okay new function g so how basically we are constructing new function g in order to construct new function g we are going to take the difference between this line so this line is px and this function is fx so i am going to take the uh, difference between these two okay so whatever function that comes into picture so that is fpx okay so now I, what i am going to do i am i am going to tell that okay i since i have to uh, i have to find some kind of number such that i will get the maximum distance and due to that reason what i am going to do i am going to define this function as a gp okay so so initially function independent variable is x now i have independent variable i am telling that xp and corresponding to that xp i will get some kind of gp okay now now uh, what i am going to do i have to define this xp such that this this function is called argument maximum means what you have to do you have to see the distance maximum distance and you have to see the argument where this di distance occur okay maximum means if you just tell that maximum then then i can talk about this particular distance suppose that i have some kind of curve and if i am telling that maximum distance from here to here then this distance comes into picture 
if you are uh, adding some function argument means where that particular maximum distance occur okay so i am telling that at xp this maximum distance occur after adding this kind of this kind of notion argument maximum okay so xp sometime xp may exist sometime may not exist okay so suppose if that will exist then it is possible to show that i have already told you that that is nothing but if we have some kind of convex curve then and if this is maximum distance then this lie at the extreme extremum point and how to find extremum point just you have to differentiate it okay and due to that tijan now you can see that same kind of things i have done the the defined gp to be maximal value of the gap between px and fp so that i have defined okay and after that what i have done i am telling that i am just rearranging that and give some kind of i am telling that we can also write gp plus fp equal to px and after that f is differentiable then maximum maximization condition i have actually keep here and if you keep the maximization con uh, condition it means that i have to calculate g g dash p and here i have to calculate since x is independent variable so i have to take dg by dx okay and if you calculate dg by dx then i will get p f dash xp equal to 0 okay now if you solve this then you are able to get that kind of of maximum point okay and after getting that maximum point what we have or what uh, what we obtain we are obtain the new new function okay so so let us try to see by example then things become more clear suppose i have some kind of function fx equal to x square okay so if i have fx equal to x square so you can see that fx equal to x square so i can tell that f dash x that is 2x i am taking derivative with respect to x and f double dash dash x is 2 so that is greater than 0 so obviously this is convex function so from the plot also you are able to see okay so this is x square and this is x okay after that once we have con uh, convex function it is possible to show that i can draw one can of line from the origin such that there exists some point this is maximum from here okay so in order to find that what i have done i have i have actually created some kind of line and px and minus x square means distance between this line and this i have created and after that in order to transform this function into new variable you have to, what you have to do you have to differentiate this because that is going to to lie at the some kind of maximum point or minima point so extremum i have to calculate so p p minus 2x so what happens in this way i can able to relate what is relation between p and x and once i will get the relation between p x p and x so everywhere in place of x i am going to substitute the p and in this way you can see that initially fx is function of x x now that is now i will get another function that is function of p another variable and p and x obviously that is related okay so so whenever we are doing transformation since i am transforming x into p so i have to make sure that this should be invertible also okay otherwise i will lost similarly if you have x power, power alpha by alpha it is possible to show that that i can able to transform this like gp p power beta by beta if alpha beta will satisfy this kind of relation okay why i have taken this example i will tell you the next uh, next slide okay using this example i can get very very excellent inequality and that kind of inequality we are using several time okay so geometrical interpretation of this transformation is the tangent line to the graph f at xp suppose that if we have one dimensional curve then geometrical interpretation of this transformation i am going to transform the whole curve in such a way such that if i draw some kind of line okay so whatever whatever farthest distance from this so so i have this farthest point argument point that is parallel to that line okay so same kind of things i have written geometrically the tangent line to the graph f at x b must have a slope p that is it must be parallel to the original original line through the origin okay similarly if you have 
f x equal to m x square by 2, you can able to transform in, in another coordinate that is p. Okay. Now, if you see, suppose that if you have this kind of curve, and if you do the Legendre Legendre transformation, so so here I have this kind of curve. So corresponding to this curve, it is possible to show that that is again curve like this. Corresponding to this, I have I have to draw the curve like this, and after that I have to to find the farthest distance so that is transformed to this kind of curve we just transformed to some kind of line from here to here okay so same kind of things i have written that fx be a convex polygon then gp is also a convex poly polygon in which vertex fx correspond uh, correspond to edge of gp okay from here you are able to see and edge of fx to be vertex of vertex of gp okay so it is possible to show that if I have convex polygon, then after applying this transformation, I can again able to get some kind of convex poly, poly, uh, polygon. Okay, this, uh, this is just uh, uh, the application of ligand, Ligandre transformation. Okay, now one can also use the Ligandre transformation for some kind of inequality. Okay, so suppose that sometime whenever you are uh, you are doing some kind of calculation at that time we have to show that something either is positive or negative okay but what happens some kind of term you are getting like this px okay so it is possible to show that whenever two term are multiply so you are able to generate some kind of inequality like this okay where you have fx and gx fx is some kind of convex function and gp is also a convex function Okay, and this inequality is very very famous. That is called Young's inequality. Okay, so it is possible to show that Legendre transformation and Young's inequality both are related. Okay, several places you are able to see the use of Young's inequality whenever you try to solve some problem related to control or some kind of problem related to the data driven control modeling. Several places this inequality is very very important or famous too okay so let us try to see that what i have done i have taken fx equal to x square by 2 okay and and after that uh, i have applied the transformation i have already told you that applying transformation is not difficult what you can do px minus x square by 2 and after that what you can do you can take the derivative extremum point you have to calculate and you you have to transfer everything in terms of extremum point okay and after that, I will get now uh, by using this formula, you can see that I will get this kind of inequality. Okay. So this uh, suppose that if I have x power alpha and uh, by alpha. So just in the previous slide, what we, we found that there Legendre transformation can express like this where alpha and beta is related like this. So I can get this kind of inequality. Okay. So whenever you have px kind of function, you are able to get inequality like uh, x power alpha by alpha x power beta by beta so suppose that somewhere you have to adjust some quantity that is uh, that is like x square and p square something like this at that time you can put alpha equal to 2 and beta equal to 2 then you are able to get in, uh, this kind of inequality sometime it might possible you have to uh, get some inequality that is 2 by 3 and this is something such that it is unequal to 1 so at that time also you are able to drive the inequality based on this particular transformation so this is extra use of this transformation now till now what we have seen that if i have just some kind of curve that is lying on two dimension okay so curve is basically function of one variable and that is going to lie in two dimension x and y now whenever i have generalized then again i can able to check the the convexity of function at that time again i have to take double derivative but it is possible to show that at that time double derivative comes into this part okay so i have something like and and i will teach you uh, the what is meaning of positive definiteness that kind of things uh, uh, so far i haven't deal okay so if that is greater than zero then i can tell that f function is convex for multi input multi output case okay and again other process are remains the same how to find that point so now that point is not just not a single point that is some kind of column vector or row vector you can take okay so a state forward way one can apply the ligand, uh, ligand transformation for 
whenever we have more than one variable okay now let us come to the our goal okay so what is our goal i have some kind of some kind of system i know the kinetic energy i know the potential energy i know the dissipation energy okay so for time being you can forget about the dissipation energy or some kind of external force suppose i know the kinetic energy and potential energy okay and uh, by knowing the kinetic energy or and potential energy what we have to do now i have to drive the mathematical model of the system so one way i can go using the euler lagrange equation that is called lagrange system okay so and in previous class i have solved several example we have defined lagrange function like kinetic energy minus potential energy and after that we have just solved this kind of partial differential equation in terms of generalized coordinate system and after that i will get the some kind of mathematical model okay but if you see this so every generalized coordinate system that is give the second order differential equation so if i have n generalized coordinate system then i have 2n first order uh, uh, then i have 2n second order equation okay so it is possible to show now by using this kind of uh, transformation to this two means uh, to second order so uh, this is converted into first order to first order equation okay so suppose that now i have n second order uh, equation n n second order equation for the euler lagrange um, system for n degree of freedom then i will get 2n first order equation by hamiltonian hamiltonian and this is called canon canonical equation also okay so set of first order equation i will get direct by using this kind of transformation so let us try to see that how basically we will do or apply this kind of transformation okay so what i am telling that consider a system of lagrange equation so so one term in lagrange equation what we found that we have this kind of term dot l by dot q dot and after that i have something like minus dot l by dot q equal to 0 so we have this kind of term so what we have done we have defined this term as a some variable that is called p dot okay and after that i have defined this variable as a p okay so if you define this variable as a p then you can see that here p dot d by dt is p dot and i have defined this variable as a p dot so p dot minus p dot that will satisfy okay so so what i have i have done we are writing now we are doing some kind of coordinate transformation okay so i have selected some kind of coordinate dot l by dot q as a p so automatically since this equation should be zero if there is no external force no dissipation due to that reason automatically this should be p dot anyone has confusion on this and due to that reason i have written here like this okay and where lagrange function is written like this so whenever i am writing lagrange function i have told you that q q dot coordinate system and time every information is given and that map to some kind of real real valued function so that kind of things i have written here that rn q belongs to rn and degree of freedom i have q dot also belongs to rn and time belongs to r i am just talking about forward time and that map to some kind of real number because l is kinetic energy minus potential energy kinetic energy is also a scalar potential energy is also a scalar due to that reason this is real number real valued function because we are assuming that whatever energy that is measurable okay so which we we assume to be convex with respect to second or argument q dot because if you see the kinetic energy okay so kinetic energy always come in some form like m x dot a square in some kind of general form you can able to write that m x trans x dot transpose p x dot something like that in this form they are coming okay so due to that reason in in the higher order case i cannot give guarantee that that is convex with respect to the first variable but at least i can tell that with respect to second variable that is always convex so same kind of things i have written here okay now what is our claim our claim is that euler lagrange equation so this is euler lagrange equation that can be equivalent to 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 an first order equation okay q q here i am assuming that belongs to rn okay so 
I have this kind of equation for uh, with respect to Q1, Q2, Q3, Qn. Every every time I have to solve. So that is equivalent to this equation. Okay. So suppose that now I have Q1. So corresponding to Q1, I have P1. Corresponding to P, I have Q. Like that. Okay. Now what? Uh, uh, and at that time, you can see that new coordinate system H is involved. Okay. So H, how to define H? So H is basically defined based on the Legendre transformation. Okay. And I have told you that Legendre transformation. Whenever we are doing the Legendre transformation, so I have to identify the coordinate. Okay. So so I am identifying Q dot coordinate. Why Q dot? Because only with respect to Q dot, I can able to ensure that that is convex. So what I have done? Same like whenever if you see carefully the first case. So in order to do Legendre transformation x and here y and this is fx function and after that we are actually drawing some kind of line that is through origin and p and after that we are searching the maximum distance from here. Okay, so at that time we have defined p x and after that l. So similar kind of things. Here you can say p is here and with respect to x this is convex here that is with respect to q dot that is convex and due to that reason i have written q dot here okay and after that l function so so i have to actually see the distance between these two these two function okay now what i have to do now i have to prove this okay so before going to prove this now i have to established some kind of equivalence okay so let us try to see how basically we have established the equivalence okay so what i am telling uh, this is obvious that whenever i have some kind of function okay so first you can assume that i have just q belongs to r okay so q belongs to r case is very very simple q dot basically we are telling that with respect to q dot that is convex okay so at that time i have formulated the the linear function and after that I am telling that I have L and all because I am just focusing on Q dot. So, uh, so I am not caring about what is Q and T. So due to that reason I have written like this. But obviously Q and QT is here. Okay. And after that I have to minimize it. So whenever you are going to do minimization of this, then you have to take the derivative with respect to Q dot. In case of the, the scalar case, if you remember that at that time Px minus Fx so I am taking derivative with respect to x. So p f dash x with respect to x. Okay. So similar kind of things. I have to take derivative with respect to q dot. And if you take the derivative with respect to q dot, then p comes into picture and dou l q dot by dou q dot comes into picture. Why partial derivative? Because l is also function of q and t. And due to that reason, I am just interested with respect to this variable. So same kind of things I have basically written here that this this coordinate system p is farthest okay or p is farthest from the maxima point okay and now what you can do you can take the total differentiation of the hamiltonian function okay so hamiltonian function if you see carefully that hamiltonian is function of the p and after that q and t okay so due to that reason i have to take partial derivative of h with respect to p, partial derivative of h with respect to q, partial derivative of h with respect to t, and and increment dp dq dt. So I, I hope that you are able to understand this. Now in place of h, since we have formulated this, and due to that reason again I have to express derivative with respect to this, and after that we have to equate. And after equating this, it is possible to show. So please take the partial. Um, um, uh, take the variation of this and after that you can just equate. So q dot is nothing but dou h by dou p. So this kind of expression comes into picture. Similarly, dou h by dou q is nothing but minus dou l by dou q and dou h by dou t is dou l by dou t like this. Okay. So by solving these three equations, it is possible to show that I can able to get the first order model. Okay. So most of time if you see the h, then h is or L is not function of time, kinetic energy and potential energy. So this this particular particular term is not important for us. And due to that reason, what basically we are doing after doing Legendre transformation of the Lagrangian function, I will get the Hamiltonian function. And and uh, how to define Hamiltonian function? 
so with respect to second or argument i can define the hamiltonian function and then directly i will get the two set of first order equation okay or a state space representation or canonical form okay so and converse also one can easily prove means first uh, whenever we are proving because this proof is if and only if proof so due to that reason either you can write like this and you can assume that if some lagrange equation is satisfied then we will get this kind of thing so that is obvious okay so i am not going to proof of the converse okay so now what we are going to do we are going to to formulate so this is generalized formulation of the hamiltonian function or hamiltonian based based modeling for general class of function okay but whenever we are doing dealing with the mathematical modeling most of time we have mechanical system electromechanical system chemical system some kind of system from the um, uh, uh, computer science or some other system finance system you can assume so each and every time i have to formulate some kind of energy <coughs> some kind of equivalence of kinetic energy or potential energy and then we have to proceed further and due to that reason what i am going to do now i am going to take first the help of euler lagrange equation and i am going to restrict myself on l that is difference of kinetic energy minus potential energy okay and with respect to that now i am going to to solve these three equation these three equation in the previous slide this slide i have to i have to solve these three equation so for general l this kind of equation but now whenever we are dealing with the mathematical model we know that l is nothing but difference of kinetic energy minus potential energy okay and now if you see the general case kinetic energy can be given like this okay i have already told you that some something and after that when we will see the positive uh, positive definite matrices at that time we are able to picture this kind of things uh, means clearly okay so this is the general form of the kinetic energy okay we are aij that depend on the q and t and potential energy is just function of the generalized coordinate system so so potential energy is function of q and kinetic energy is function of the q dot okay or they are suppose that if i have two and three dot then their cross multiplication also comes into picture so here you can see that q1 dot and qj means one and two that kind of terminology also comes into picture for higher order case now what is our claim given assumption the uh, assumption is that i have some kind of convex function with respect to this kinetic energy okay and after that what we are telling that now using this assumption so i i, I have formulated hp that is nothing but pq dot, dot minus lq now what we are telling that if i replace l by t minus u then h h whatever h that is nothing but that is the addition of kinetic energy plus potential energy that that kind of things i am going to now establish okay it means that i am going to do mathematical model based on the total energy okay so now try to understand this lemma so lemma is telling that the value of quadratic function fx and its lagrange transformation gp coincide at corresponding point fx and gp what i am telling that suppose that whenever we are doing the Uh, the transformation lagrange transformation at that time we are finding the maximum point so this point is actually and gp curve we are defining so gp whenever we are formulating so this point is also going to lie on curve and this point is also going to lie on this gp and due to that reason at least at, at that point fx equal to gp okay so that kind of things so it is very easy to show now one more important thing you can see that if you have some kind of quadratic function okay so suppose i have take simple quadratic function half m square and uh, define as f if you calculate dou f by dou x you can see here that i i will get this kind of things x and if you multiply dou f by dou x again with x then you will get x square so that this is nothing but 2f okay so so what what euler theorem is telling 
this theorem is given by Euler. So this is for a scalar case. So now you can take any general uh, general case and suppose if I have some kind of homogeneous function and if you calculate the derivative of homogeneous function with that argument x and if you multiply x then you will get the two term of that function by by uh, from this example you can able to visualize okay so similar kind of things I have substituted in order to prove that at least where where tangent is going to touch and this slope both are equal so that point is coincide on both curve so how to calculate that point so gp px minus fx and in place of p now what i am going to do i am going to uh, to replace dou f by dou x because we know that um, farthest point is the partial derivative with respect to x so p and f dash x due to that reason i have write, uh, written dou f by dou x here and i know dou f by dou x is nothing but 2f and due to that reason i can generate fx okay and same kind of things using this example also you can check okay now what i have to do i have to finally show that hamiltonian function is the addition of kinetic energy plus potential energy so now if you see this transformation legendre transformation so in legendre transformation what i am telling that i have lagrangian function with q q dot and t so with respect to q dot that is convex okay so q dot or homogeneous you can tell so again q dot in place of q dot so so kinetic energy is acts like something like f and if you multiply dou f by dou x into x that is 2f and similar kind of situation here you can see that p you can interpret as a x and q dot you can interpret that derivative of kinetic energy with respect to q okay so this term is nothing but 2t and l you know t minus u due to that region that is kinetic energy plus potential energy Okay, and now in this way you are able to calculate the Hamiltonian function. So now you know the Hamiltonian function that is kinetic energy plus potential energy. Now if you know the Hamiltonian function, then from this particular equation here, you can see that now Q dot, directly I can write Q dot equal to, Q is generalized coordinate system, P I have already told you when I have started this uh, uh, the energy session at that time I have told you that how basically they have started q dot and after that dou l by dou q equal to zero so they have defined this as a p dot and this particular quantity they have defined as a p so I know the p also h now I know that is kinetic energy plus potential energy so by solving dou l by dou q I can calculate the p and after that with respect to p i can take the partial derivative of h so i will get this equation similarly i can get this equation too okay and in this way i can able to get first order model directly based on the second or third equation is not relevant because kinetic energy and potential energy is not function of time so i have taken very very simple example example of pendulum okay so in pendulum system i am assuming there is no friction okay so this pendulum is swinging in the absence of any friction force, absence of air you can assume. L is the length of pendulum, M is the mass of bob and theta is the angle. Okay, so first try to calculate the kinetic energy. Okay, so uh, this is potential energy, sorry. So potential energy, so that is MgL 1 minus cos theta. So so from here uh, that, that things become clear because this angle I have assuming that is theta. So, 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 uh, so if you see carefully, then what I have to do, this is L and after that, this is basically nothing but L cos theta. So, L minus L cos theta. Due to that region, this is our potential energy. Now, kinetic energy, how to uh, find the cal uh, kinetic energy? I have to see the velocity along this curve. So, this is L, this is theta and due to that region, this, this length from here to here, that is L theta. Okay. So, now S this length is l theta so you can calculate s dot that is nothing but l theta dot because l is constant and due to that region after that half mb square you can apply so in this way i can able to get the kinetic energy and how to do formulate the lagrangian lagrangian is kinetic energy minus potential energy so you can just subtract this minus this so that will give you lagrangian once you will get the lagrangian then i can able to calculate the generalized coordinate means transform coordinate p that is dou l by dou theta okay because 
I, I, uh, if uh, whenever you will get some kind of con confusion, then please write this equation quickly, and from that equation you can guess. Okay. So here you can see that somehow I have to make this whole quantity equal to zero. So if I define this as a p and this as a p dot, then only that uh, that is possible. And due to that reason, here I have defined dot l by dot q dot. Since here variable is theta. Uh, one generalized coordinate system is theta because theta is only varying here and due to that reason i have calculated dot l by dot theta so i will get this and from this i can able to calculate what is my theta dot that is p by ml square okay and once you will get theta dot now what you can do you can formulate the hamiltonian function that is addition of the kinetic energy plus potential energy so potential kinetic energy is our kinetic energy is actually ml square theta dot square by 2 so in place of theta you can substitute in terms of p because you have to uh, in order to do mathematical model you have to calculate dot h by dot theta okay so due to that reason what i have done here uh, uh, in order to uh, calculate the dot h by dot p i have to do sorry so so due to that reason you, you have to uh, to formulate everything in terms of the p only and after that i have kinetic energy mgl is missing here 1 minus cos theta now what you can do you you have seen that we have two equation one equation is p dot that is dot h by dot theta so i have taken and in this way after that i am i am going to substitute the value of p dot and i know that what is p dot from this equation p dot is nothing but theta double dot ml square so same kind of things i have substituted here and i will get this kind of so either you can apply the euler lagrange equation you will apply the newton's law you will apply the hamiltonian principle you are able to get same equation in this way you are able to verify that whatever way you have uh, you have arrived that is correct or not okay so now it is time to conclude the today's lecture so what we found in today's lecture that whenever we are solving euler lagrange equation at that time i have second order equation so i am going to define some kind of transformation such that i i will get directly the first order equation and that is nothing but hamiltonian formulation and hamiltonian formulation is little more more uh, means they have little more physical interpretation you can see that i am talking about total energy in case of lagrangian uh, lagrangian uh, formulation i am talking about difference between kinetic energy minus potential energy so so uh, means direct intuition that doesn't comes into picture here we are at least able to show that how basically total energy is changing and based on that i i have driven the mathematical model and due to that reason means mathematical obviously uh, means uh, euler lagrange formulation is basically more more transparent more useful because they are able to take care about whenever dissipative term or other term is there this is the limitation of hamiltonian transformation that one cannot incorporate that kind of things okay and due to that reason what uh, how basically people are doing they are taking the difference of kinetic energy minus potential energy and after that they are converting second order equation into first order equation okay and in this way they are getting the state specific presentation now what is my suggestion so so you can take any system and try to do all three kind of mathematical modeling mathematical modeling based on first principle mathematical modeling based on the lagrangian mathematical modeling based on the hamiltonian whenever you are doing hamiltonian try to give some kind of assumption remove some kind of complexation and then try to get some kind of mathematical model okay and then try to check that which method is more beneficial okay so with this remark class is in from my side if you have any question then please let me know okay if you don't have question then